Hello everyone, my name is Squidhead Joe, and today we're going to be talking about the Beacon Studio again. So I've talked about this so many different times on the channel, and people are probably getting over it as far as me talking about the Beacon stuff. But something actually happened yesterday after I posted my video talking about the Beacon Studio and my frustration between the noise suppression and the difference between that and the noise removal and like background echo noise removal and stuff like that and different VSTs and plugins that would be more beneficial I think to a content creator who is recording stuff and not necessarily just streaming and everything and trying to use this device and especially since people are going to have two PC setups they could probably take uh, advantage if they had Nvidia I would say broadcast integration into the software and after I posted that uh Jack he's a recent I would say subscriber on the channel me and him have talked about the whole beacon, uh, beacon ecosystem and everything and he's been coming by on the live streams I've been lurking in his live streams I'm gonna leave his live streams linked in the description he streams on multiple different platforms fantastic content creator as far as his wealth of knowledge and his help with me you know figuring out this stuff when it comes to the beacon stuff and he's just a really good guy so definitely check him out he plays a lot of warframe if you're interested in that stuff but again i'll have his stuff linked in the description so if you do have questions or wherever he's a little bit more knowledgeable about this ecosystem because he's had it longer than me and um, he's been able to help out other people as well so i would definitely say you know look to him for some knowledge and that's when i say when it comes to product reviews and stuff like that i don't mention it often enough but i think more and more people need to understand that you shouldn't just watch one video and come to the conclusion that oh i watched one video that cements my thoughts on the product or wherever unless it's just absolutely horrible like most of the vivitar stuff that i've covered from walmart or stuff like that in the past like yeah those products are just obviously bad but when it comes to audio interfaces microphones all that stuff that stuff is more i would say preference because obviously your voice is going to be different than mine my issue and what i've learned today based off of me and jack talking about it on my live stream yesterday and i'm sorry jack it was only like an hour long but i, I just ran out of time and stuff doing a whole bunch of stuff but what i noticed is that with my voice and the beacon software my voice is way too low um my natural voice it's even i would say slightly lower and more bassier than what you're probably hearing right now in real life and because my i would say lowness of my voice i have so many valleys in the waveform while i'm talking that I'm having problems on the low end of the spectrum. And obviously I can't boost the gain too much because then you just, you're introducing a whole bunch of other issues and problems when you boost the, the mic level and the gain or whatever too high. So what I've noticed is that um, my idea of the NVIDIA broadcast talking to Jack on my live stream, I came up with the conclusion that I could use the Beacon Studio and it take that microphone and all the processing it does through the Beacon Studio and then run it through NVIDIA Broadcast and then in the software, uncheck the Beacon, be the Beacon Studio and then check the NVIDIA Broadcast as my main microphone source or wherever in their mixing software. And I was like, that's the way to do it. You don't have to apply it to the VST or wherever through, you know, um, doing it OBS and like the complicated way I was saying or wherever to do it yesterday. And I was like, that idea works. And it was just by me talking to Jack back and forth about the stuff. But the problem that I ran into today, because I was going to come in here and record a video talking about it, is that you can't use NVIDIA broadcasts with the Beacon stuff. And it's not actually Beacon's fault. Like I'm saying, like I mostly say that all the time that their products are trash and stuff. It's not even that. It's the for the simple fact that the order of operations, as far as how you EQ stuff, you need to remove the background noise and the actual, um, I would say echo and all that stuff. When you apply those VSTs, you have to apply them in a certain order in order to get the end result that you're looking for. So for example, in the Elgato Wavelink software, I would have their version of the background noise removal or whatever first, and then I would apply stuff like a noise gate or if I wanted to add anything else or wherever, and then I would apply an EQ, you know what I'm saying, at the end or wherever of those things. So it would apply those in order because the NVIDIA broadcast is being applied after 
the Beacon Studio does all its, you know, stuff in the software as far as like the VSTs and all this changing of the waveforms, all that stuff, it sounds like crap. And I'm not even going to subject you guys to what I found or wherever in the audio and stuff. It's just, it's not usable. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really bad. Um, so yeah, that kind of shot that idea down. So I do apologize for the other video. I'll probably link this video in, the, in a pinned comment or wherever for the for the last video. But it just kind of sucks. And that's why I keep ag advocating for, I would say, you know, third party plugins being added into their software or integrated into the software so they can be processed at, at once. But I think with the noise suppression and the expander, if you look at the tabs, they're in that order because if you had the noise suppression and the expander and stuff like that later down the line or wherever while you're eq and stuff then it's just not going to sound good um so that's why i think it's foremost before you even get to the compressor and stuff like that as far as being able to change stuff that's why it's the mic gain and then the noise suppression and then the expander and then the com uh, compressor so i i get the order of operations there but like i said i think if they just could make a tab or wherever and have like a subsection in the tab of the noise suppression and be like, hey, you can use noise suppression or you can use background noise removal. You know what I'm saying? And just and just have it because like I said, Elgato has worked with NVIDIA. NVIDIA is working with OBS or wherever for the NVIDIA encoding. Like I'm pretty sure they could potentially work with them to incorporate their stuff or wherever into the software if they wanted to again i'm not saying that it would be easy to do and i'm not claiming to be a software engineer or a audio engineer or anything like that i just think that giving options especially when you're paying the premium price that you're paying for these products I, there's nothing wrong with it in my personal opinion and um yeah it's just upsetting that i can't do that uh the next next thing is that i've been getting a lot of comments lately especially on the last video people have been saying well if you're recommending not getting the beacon studio or you know certain devices out there then can you recommend i would say a device that does all the processing on the actual device itself, the physical device. So it's not taking up computer resources and they can listen to it actively. And the problem with that is that those kind of devices that I would recommend are gonna be kind of expensive. And it also depends on what kind of content creation you're doing. A lot of people kind of leave out that aspect. They just ask me my opinion. And then they don't tell me like, oh, I'm going to be using it for podcasting. I'm going to be using it for streaming. I'm going to be using it for recording. I'm just sitting in Discord or wherever and playing games with my friends, or I'm going to be using it to talk to people inside of a video game. You know what I'm saying? Like there's so many different aspects that you could be using these devices for that you have to let somebody know. And like I said, you have to take my my opinions with a grain of salt because this is again my opinion and my voice and my thoughts are going to be different than your tone of voice and your thoughts or wherever because you could get the beacon studio and all my complaints can be disregarded you know what i'm saying because like i said my voice is so deep that it's really hard for what beacon does to compensate for it you know you know what i'm saying and that's just the truth because you can see my adam's apple is, is huge you know what i mean um so yeah it just really depends on a lot of factors going into it but if i had to suggest something i've been talking about a lot if you're going to be podcasting and stuff like that i would recommend the mackie dlz creator series and if i had to pick like one or the other i would go with the xs i think it's called or whatever the smaller version that doesn't have the faders but it just has the knobs unfortunately but it's a smaller footprint to go on a desk and the reason why i recommend it over the road one is because a lot of these people based on how they're talking and i'm not trying to judge anybody but just based off of how they're talking they're not really i would say uh ready to delve into something that is uh not going to be really it's going to be complicated even more complicated than like the beacon stuff um and with the mackie stuff or wherever and they bought, they've been bought by road but with the mackie stuff at least on board it has stuff you can look it up but it has like a little program or something to run it and they, it would ask you, you know, have you ever messed with this kind of device before? Do you need help setting this stuff up? And it will guide you through wherever um, for, it's pretty much like an audio mixer for dummies kind of thing or wherever, you know what I'm saying? And it's gonna hold your hand 
and walking through the process. And like I said, that's what I would use for people who are probably going to do like a one to two person podcast setup. You can do some streaming with it. But the problem is, is that you're not going to have individual sub mixes because their individual sub mixes software is for their Mackie mainstream. And that thing is just, it's a hunk of junk in my personal opinion, based off of how many complaints and how many, I have not seen any positive reviews other than the people that got it sent out from Mackie to them. I haven't seen any positive reviews of that thing uh, since, because it just doesn't have physical controls over the software and the software is running on your PC and it's not running on the physical hardware and it has the capture cards and all that stuff. And it seems like a cool device, but it's like, if you're gonna have companion software, have physical controls over it, on the device itself and that's just another application like i said to run in the background and a lot of people from what i'm hearing is saying that they don't like having software run on the computer me personally it's never been a problem running software on my pc a lot of people don't like taking up resources i personally don't have a problem because if anything push comes to sub i can just hook up my dual pc setup again like i used to have in the past so i don't really see why people have such a problem but I understand it's a concern for some people because maybe they have a lower spec rig or something like that, or they're running a lot of applications and they're running a lot of uh, stuff for their live streams and everything like that. So I get the point why people don't want it. To me, it's not a requirement in order to be like, am I gonna pick up this device or not? For other people, I can see why it's a requirement, but me personally, it's not a requirement. Just like when people tell me in the comment section, oh, I want to be able to hear myself and how does it sound or wherever, like when I review microphones, they want to know if it's um, if it's an accurate representation, there's no latency, you know what I'm saying, as far as listening to myself and stuff like that. To me, again, that's not a requirement for me because I don't listen to myself while live streaming or recording stuff, because I can already hear, you know, through the bone conduction or wherever of just talking, I can hear my voice and I edit enough. I stream enough. I know how my voice sounds. I don't need to hear how my voice sounds in my microphone on top of people talking in discord, you know, playing video games, people in game chat, you know, blasting music, you know, all that stuff. It's just, it's going to be an extra thing that I just don't need to do. You know what I'm saying? So when it comes to all that information, when you ask me, you know, what are you going to rec recommend? I am not going to be the average person because I thought it was just a small subsection of people, but it's been made more clear and clear to me that there is a lot of people out there for whatever reason that listens to their voice that, you know, once the, the, the processing on the actual device, they don't want companion software. If it is companion software, then it's like just for firm firmware updates or something like that. They don't want the software running on their PC, you know, all these extra requirements. And to me, a lot of them just never been a problem for me. So what I would say is, like I said, for podcasting, for recording videos or something like that, I would go with the Mackie DLZ Creator XS. It's a little bit pricey, but at least you're going to have multiple different connections and you would be decently good for a while because that thing just kind of came out. But again, I can't stress it enough that you're going to have to do research on it to make sure that that's what you want. Now, if you are streaming and you want sub mixes and stuff like that, unfortunately, that's going to be a little bit harder because I seen Harris Heller. I'm not saying he's copying what I did when I talked about the Go XLR and stuff like that. Most people have been saying because people have been bugging him about doing a bit revisit because they came out with a new update and stuff. But it's just like I said, when I said the Mac, the Go XLR is not dead. Yes, they're coming out with, I would say, sub mixes and stuff. But the way you EQ stuff, the ports on the back and everything, that thing is showing its age and it's barely dropping in price. And people are just waiting for a Go XLR to some kind of revamp because it needs it. And it's just, it's stupid to me that a company is still charging how much they are for a device that that's, that's that old for the type of device it is. Naturally, you would think that thing would have been less uh, like dropped, like a, at least a hundred dollars to $200 by now, in my personal opinion, in price, just because the competition in the market, the lack of features or wherever on the physical device, as well as in the actual software, it's like, come on. So what I would recommend is what people have been telling me in my comments 
And after doing some research, I realized that uh, they have come out with another device. And then I saw Harris Heller's video on it. So it's going to be from Roland. It's one of their uh, audio mixers that they just came out with or wherever. But I also know about the Bridgecast, I think it's called or something like that, that has like multiple different inputs and stuff like that, like XLR inputs from what I understand. I uh, could be wrong, but it has the onboard processing. It has ways to listen into your microphone. It does have companion software. I think if I remember correctly, it has some submix controls on the device, but depending on the level of the uh, the bridge cast that you get, it can get somewhat expensive. I have reached out to them before through an email to see you know if I could test one of their devices, but because I've talked about audio mixers and how I just am with my channel, I don't imagine a company like that that's more on the professional end is going to want to work with somebody who is like me so it is what it is um but yeah i would probably recommend one of those devices i have no personal i would say experience with the devices any of the devices i have mentioned so far but the amount of information that i have on the mackie stuff is a little bit more i would say concrete and knowledgeable than the Roland stuff because every time i try to look them up i don't really like I've heard like seen videos and tutorials on this stuff, but I've never really heard of a con I would say a condensed like experience with the device, you know what I'm saying? Versus looking at the Beacon Studio, looking at the uh, Mackie stuff or wherever I've seen the tutorials and I've seen the experience videos. So it, it is what it is. So I would recommend one of those devices, like I said, the Mackie or the Roland, if you have the money for it, especially uh, since a lot of people are saying that they had the Gold XLR and they're looking to switch or, you know, the Gold XLR has crapped on them. That's why I'm making this video because somebody commented that yesterday. So that's what I would recommend. And on top of that, when somebody asks me my recommendations, sometimes they don't even ask, like they don't tell me their price range. So I don't know, really know what to really say or wherever another thing that i have noticed and i think is pretty cool i don't think it has any vsts or anything like that but it has multiple different types of connections it's from hyper x i've only seen one video and it was like a foreign video and i don't even think it was in english but they apparently it's like 150 something dollars or wherever i might try to get my hands on it i might reach out to hyper x i don't even know but the cool thing about it is is that it has a xlr input it has a 3.5 millimeter jack input and like a third option where for input or something like that i think it may be for a headset or something and it's like all three of those can be plugged into one device and then it just sends that audio signal to your computer i think it's cool but i don't think it does any kind of eqing or anything on the device and i don't think it's any companion software but i, I think it's i think it's kind of cool for what it is or whatever i would be interested in taking a look at it so maybe i can cop that in the future whether they send it out or i purchase it myself i'm still kind of really interested in that because i think that's really cool and if there's a way to use that the plug in multiple microphones and i'm thinking about getting a little um 3.5 millimeter to xlr cable um input thing or wherever to plug in the back of the beacon studio so i can plug up three different microphones to the beacon studio and use it that's a theory i'm just going to try to use it in the future we'll see how it goes but that would be one of the devices i would use or wherever that's pretty cool um but that's just a personal like project i would do but again that's another device out there. But like I said, I don't think it's going to have any kind of fancy like EQing and all that stuff. It's just going to have probably raw audio and then you're going to have to apply VSTs and recording or through OBS or whatever it is. But essentially, my only, I would say, thing out there that I would recommend is going to be, like I said, the Mackie DLZ Creator XS. There are some tips and videos out there on how to use, I would say, uh, Rode. I would say audio mixers or wherever, um, whichever one you want to go with, depending on the price and what you're trying to do. They are putting out, you know, sub mixes and stuff. But the thing about what people have been complaining about is the fact that the devices are so old or old ish, I would say not as old as some other devices available, but they're so old and they're playing catch up that now that they release those products, the software and the submixes and stuff like that is janky. It's still in its, you know, crawling phase as far as like getting them up and running. So I imagine, you know, give it some time, it'll be good. And they're, like I said, they're playing catch up and stuff like that. So them trying to convert their device and make it more applicable to more different types of content creation out there is a good thing. 
but like I said, it's going to take some time in order for it to be really, really recommendable and viable. And on top of that, there is a lot of tip videos out there on how to just use device from the a basics like setup or wherever and trying to EQ your microphone and doing all the stuff. So I would recommend, like I said, a Rode device or a Mackie device, more so a Mackie device. If you don't want the frustration of trying to watch so many different videos and learn a whole bunch of stuff or wherever to set it up to get it to where you want, I would lean more towards the Mackie being a little bit more beginner friendly. If you're streaming, I would take a look at one of the Roland stuff like the Bridgecast or any of their devices or wherever, depending on your price range. I would go with that or whatever because again i know it has onboard processing and it's able to do certain things as far as like eq and submixes all that stuff and then when it comes to another device that i could recommend streaming like i said the beacon studio is probably going to be able to i would go and venture to say about 60 percent of people out there maybe 65 percent of people out there will be able to use the beacon studio with no problem but like i said i think it's going to lean more towards your voice it's going to lean towards how deep your voice is how high you talk or wherever as far as tone and everything like that what you're trying to do with the device and all that stuff especially with the two pc setup if you get that and then get like i don't know the rog like new hall effect keyboard because it has two usb ports or wherever and it's really good for gaming if you don't use armory crate <laughs> uh, and you can hook up both the keyboard to both you know computers and then easily toggle between you know both computers or wherever so like you can do stuff like that with the beacon studio and like gaming and doing all that stuff so it's going to be really good but like i said there's going to be a subsection of people who are going to fall into my category where your voice doesn't really complement the beacon studio because you're gonna have to drop so, so many stuff and even right now you can probably hear a little bit more room presence because i had to drop stuff down but i have a desk fan going blowing to me because i can't run my ac unit like i talked about in yesterday's video while recording and it's getting pretty hot i would say in this room and i've been in here recording for a while and i'll go ahead and show you guys um it has a humidity of 30 or uh, 73 percent and it's already like 75 degrees fahrenheit in here and outside right now it's about 54 degrees Fahrenheit. So you, you see what I'm saying? Like, that's the problem that I'm running into. And like I said, I'm just going to be completely honest. It's just me. You know what I'm saying? It's me as a human being and my voice type and everything like that. So I'm not going to knock it too much. It's just the fact of the price. And in order to get the full functionality of it, you're probably going to have to, if you're smart, going to pick up the Beacon Mix Crate because there's no reason to have the beacon mix because you're going to have some limitations just by not having that little extra stupid tab that's hanging off the side, especially if you're streaming or just being a content creator, or even if you're playing just video games and you're just using the beacon mix, you might as well just get the beacon mix crate for like an extra $50. But like I said, both of these devices are like 200 and 250 respectively. So it's, it depends on your price range. And that's why I keep on advocating for companies to charge us fairly for these devices because you can see how expensive this stuff is and not there's no perfect audio mixer out there right depending on your category and what you're trying to do but the problem is is that it becomes so complicated so quickly especially for somebody who's brand new to this realm of stuff or wherever or like i said so many times people are telling me their old device just crapped out on them they don't want to go with the old device because they know there's new fancier stuff on the market so they're like okay what do i do now and my video i got so popular which i just didn't see coming as far as just talking about audio mixers and the situation in the industry with audio mixers for entry-level content creators who are looking for this stuff and it's like okay it does this perfectly but it fails in all these aspects and it's like why didn't you ask anybody while you were developing this stuff like I know it takes years and years to engineer, develop software development, like all that stuff. But it's like, if you would have talked to somebody, you would have known people want individual submixes or they want the, the device to have controls over the submixes, even if it's just the overall volume. And I've talked about it multiple times before. This is a hundred dollar device. And I'm pretty sure the PC panel pro like company or wherever is not a like big, big company or name brand company. But just look at the options here four faders with five knobs for a hundred bucks being able to control 
overall volume on your and then you could push these knobs down to mute you can change it or wherever or wherever to change volume like and yes the the software is just really i would say bare bones like looking wise and it looks old and stuff but it just works like there's no i have not received any bugs any errors or anything like that this is probably after doing content creation and streaming for since like 2015 all the way up to now this is probably one of the few products that actually i got that was reasonably priced that i would have 100 percent paid more for i would have paid 200 dollars for this thing if not 250 because look it's a all metal design usb type c never had a problem or issue i've had this thing you can probably see the dust on it i've had this thing for about probably like two and a half years something like that just worked like a dream again and that's personal experience but like imagine a device like that being able to map individual sub mixes and stuff like that and having those knobs and faders. like what are we doing as companies like that's perfect you know what i'm saying that's something elgato should have made instead of their stream debt plus that they have now that should have been the stream debt plus a version of something like that you, you see what i'm saying and it's like the beacon studio could have added could have had something like that tied in you, you, you see what i'm saying even if you don't want to put a digital screen on the beacon studio because of all the components inside and stuff like that and they couldn't for whatever reason attach a screen having that for 250 having this and what the beacon studio could do that would have been fine you know what i'm saying and i would 100 percent recommend it even if i hated the processing and what it does to my voice at that point i couldn't recommend it enough but now i'm, I'm telling you to pretty much pay 450 dollars for an audio setup if you go with the beacon studio because you're gonna have to get the beacon mix crate you, you see what i'm saying so that's why it's hard for me as a content creator when people ask me okay what about these audio stuff or whatever what do you recommend since you shit on so many products so many times or wherever and you have problems and issues with them and it's like my problems and issues is not an active i would say representation or reflection of what your experience is going to be and that's why i put in my review disclaimers your experience might vary or be different than mine whether it be good or positive and vice versa for me so i would say best thing case scenario go with sweetwater go with b h photo go with amazon or whatever when i shop or wherever i try to stay away from companies that have their own website and you can only purchase on their website um one of the few devices that i didn't adhere to that rule was the pc panel pro because you can't find this anywhere else other than a website but i took a chance and it was a good chance but nine times out of ten there's a lot of companies that try to skirt around warranties and and all that stuff like that and i just don't trust them so that's why i say sweetwater b h photo you know amazon or whatever depending where you're at and stuff like that what's available to you as far as shipping and stuff goes i would go with those because usually they have some of those places usually have better warranties than what you would get from the actual manufacturer or just the company's website and on top of that the return policies you know what i'm saying stuff like that just depending on how strict they are about certain things so again do your research on these products that i recommended but to wrap up the video i would say if you don't mind having to educate yourself a little bit more when it comes to podcasting recording videos or whatever just standalone stuff i would probably lean more towards the i would say road if you don't mind that stuff but if you want if you are doing podcasts and you're recording and stuff like that and you need that extra little help because you're just starting out for that type of stuff then mackie dlz creator xs all day in my personal opinion if you're going to be possibly doing some live stream on top of it and you're possibly going to be playing some video games or, you know, having discord call, all that stuff, then maybe lean towards more so of the Roland Bridgecast stuff. But like I said, that stuff can vary in prices or wherever as far as being kind of cheap to, you know, somewhat expensive or wherever. And most of these devices I'm talking about, a lot of people think that budget devices like let's say the fine fine sc3 is about 50 60 bucks or something like that but for these devices these are really good if you're chilling in discord you know what i'm saying or you're talking to people in game these are not meant for streaming and doing podcasts i wouldn't do that with these types of devices i would try to save up and get a more professional device even if you have to pay monthly or something like that it's in the long run it's gonna it's gonna pay itself off in the long run you know what i'm saying it's a more of an investment 
I'm not saying that you can't use these devices because I had somebody comment that they use the Fine Fine SC3 and like the Rode Pod mic or wherever. And I'm not knocking your choices or downplaying your choices or wherever. I'm pretty sure there's reasons why you just go ahead and do that. And like I said, I think the preamps in this is it's, it, it's fairly decent. But to me, if I wanted a more professional setup and I was trying to it, it just really depends. Like I said, I can't stress enough. It really depends on what type of content you're trying to do. And in my personal opinion, if I'm streaming, I'm going to try to give my chat, my audience, my potential as a content creator and my career, wherever the best shot possible. And if I'm just doing it as a hobby like me, I have a little bit extra disposable income. That's why I get the cameras, the lenses and all these equipment and stuff like that. But if you're just doing it as a hobby, maybe, you know, friends and, and co-workers and just, you know, maybe your community or something like that, like where you live at and stuff like that. You're just doing like a average podcast. You know what I'm saying? You're not expecting to blow up and do all that stuff. Then you can get by using, you know what I'm saying? The sub budget stuff. But when we're talking about budget stuff, we're talking about like, when you think of cameras, you think of the Sony ZV E10 Mark one or other cameras in the line and, or the Sony ZV one Mark one. You think of like $500 cameras and people will be like, whoa, 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 that's that's not budget. But when you look at the world of cameras, that is budget. So when you're looking at these audio mixers and you're looking at a device that's like $300, $400, you know, starting off, that is budget because there are there's more even more professional audio mixers out there that are 500 600 to a thousand dollars and stuff when you start looking at um camera uh, i would say video switchers and stuff like that monitors field monitors director field monitors studio lighting you know all that stuff that stuff gets expensive and most of the stuff that people are using for their live streams and you're like oh the sure sm7b is it's expensive but then the budget one is the sure mv7x and people will be like, whoa, 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 that's too expensive. Anything over $100 is expensive. And it's like, I understand it. I understand having your bank account zero. I understand having your bank account in the negative every single month. Trust me, that's where I was for a lot of years when I first got out of the military because I couldn't work and I was barely getting like, I think $500 a month off my a month, not like a month off my retirement check. And my car note at the time was like, almost $600. So do the math. Um, but I'm telling you right now, as somebody being in that spot, and in growing as a content creator and getting a little bit more disposable income, there's a lot of stuff that I sacrificed on not investing into that I should have invested into. And like I said, you have to be cemented in your thought process of what I'm going to buy. What am I going to get? And the core pillars that I keep saying is audio and video, and then maybe lighting and stuff, and then moving on to other stuff because your video, video quality can be subpar, but nowadays there's a lot of affordable stuff. Like I, I've talked about before, when it comes to like the Onsbot with their, you know, budget line of webcams, yes, they might be above a hundred dollars, but you're getting 4k 30. You know, you know what I'm saying? And it still might look somewhat of a webcam, but you're getting good quality equipment to start off with. It might not be the whole professional and it might not be on par as even the Sony ZV-1 Mark I, but it's going to allow you to record content and ain't nobody gonna flack you for it if you have an audio setup. And this is the Fine Fine Ample Tank Tank 3 going into the Beacon Studio. This microphone's around like 80, 90 bucks. You, you see what I'm saying? So you don't have to go out and get the Shure MV7X or, you know, go out and get the Shure, MV, uh, Shure SM7B. So yes, you can slack off a little bit like the Rode Pod mic or something like that. And you know what I'm saying? You can get those types of microphones, but when it comes to certain aspects, you're gonna wanna get a somewhat expensive audio interface and that's why i have complaints about these expensive audio interfaces the companies are charging us for the price like they are but they lack a lot of stuff that justifies the price and it's just like cameras you're gonna want to get i know this is not interchangeable stuff but 
you're going to want to get a camera and then you're going to want to get a lens that costs roughly around the same as mount as your camera. You're not going to want to sit there and use the kit lens. Now, people argue and say that you can use the kit lens or wherever for certain scenarios and all that stuff. And yes, it's going to be usable. But if you really think about it and what you're trying to do with your content creation and what's the bar for content creation nowadays, because it keeps getting raised daily, if not monthly and yearly, getting a camera and using its kit lens like yeah your audio is going to sound good your video is not going to be the best but it's going to be usable but at a certain point you're going to have to upgrade so why not cement where you are and start off with really decent stuff that's why like when i started doing product reviews sony zv e10 mark one sigma 16 millimeter and i've been using that setup for a long time the whole pretty much almost the whole entire time that i've been doing this content creation i just recently got 11 you know millimeter lenses and stuff like that and the sony zv e10 mark ii and using other cameras or wherever and other things for my main camera and stuff but for the longest time sony zv e10 mark one with the 16 millimeter lens and it's still a great phenomenal setup that you can even use right now you don't even have to go and get the mark ii wherever and upgrade because that is just going to last you that's the investment that i'm talking about when it comes to certain equipment i know that's a long explanation but hopefully it makes sense so again it just depends on what you're trying to do as a content creator if you're streaming if you're doing podcasts if you're recording i would say like i said podcast recording go with the road go with the mackie dlz creator or the roland bridge cast systems do your research pick from one of those the only reason why i'm not saying go xlr i know it's still somewhat of a decent device it's just i would wait for an updated one i think it's been long enough they're keep on doing revisions to the software and stuff eventually you're gonna get a you know go xlr 2 and then you're gonna look back and be like man i just got you know the go xlr and now there's a second one, you know, you know what I'm saying? So I would just hold off on getting that. Even if you have your mindset on it, I would just potentially get something else and just wait for that one to come out. So by then you probably got, you know, some, some money underneath your belt. You're just able to save up, etc. Cause I guarantee you, since the price is so high for the old one, they're probably going to do like a sure and charge an extra hundred dollars for their next device or extra two hundred dollars or whatever i'll be really surprised if it's the same price and then they drop the old one down even further um but yeah that's that's what i would do as far as like recording and stuff if you're streaming i still probably would look into the roland and depending on your voice type you might be able to get away with the beacon studio but keep in mind you're gonna have to get the beacon mix crate i know you can alt tab and and change stuff or wherever with the software and everything but just for the fluidity and being able to just you know move a knob or wherever or click and stuff like that just for the ease of access quality of life you're gonna want to get the beacon mix crate and again that's gonna be 450 dollars right there um if you wanted to, you could just not get the Beacon Studio and just get the Beacon Mic because my opinions of the Beacon Mic have changed. And again, I want to do an update video in the future over the Beacon Studio. I think for my voice type or wherever, that's a little bit uh, better than the Beacon Studio. But then you lose out on the capability of doing the dual PC setup and you're going to be you're just going to be stuck to using that microphone. You know what I'm saying? Whereas if something goes wrong with the Beacon Studio, you can get another beacon studio and you're not out the money of a microphone if you're out the, if your beacon microphone fails for some reason or something happens to it or something for whatever reason because everything that's man-made is not perfect so for god forbid something happens to the microphone you're out of the microphone and you're out of just the capability of software all stuff so you have to get the microphone again whereas if the beacon studio craps out on you you can keep whatever microphone you're using especially if you like to tone the the sound of it all that stuff and you can just go off and get another interface you, you see what i'm saying so you got to pick your poison when it comes to that but that's that's the stuff i would recommend and the only reason why i'm not bringing up like the wave xlr or any other device is because like i said most people that i'm finding that are commenting on my videos for some reason they want all the processing on the actual device itself they don't want to have to run software in the background they have a lot of limitations that they're scoping down so much. And it's like, there's not really that many options out there that I think that are more realistically affordable. 
and the realistically affordable stuff is going to be the beacon studio the wave xlr the new thing from roland you know that's going to be you know probably below 300 dollars. you know what i'm saying and or in some cases with the wave xlr and the thing the new thing from roland i think is even under 200 that's going to be more reasonable but like i said the wave xlr doesn't do the onboard processing and people told me that listening to the wave xlr doesn't sound good or whatever because it's like delayed or something or you know that doesn't that you can't listen to your actual vsts and eq or whatever that you've done through the port and it's like every time i've used it and i've been using the wave xlr for probably like three years at bare minimum or ever pretty much ever since it came out i don't know how long ago it was but pretty much ever since it came out and i've never had a problem with delay or latency listening in or listening into my eq and my voice and stuff it's just it's been fine it's just the software jankiness and if the software force closes or it messes up or something like that because it's running on your computer then you're you're just shit out of luck when it comes to uh, trying to stream record or whatever so again you know your use case to know you're better than me hopefully this long ass video helped you out in some way shape or form i do apologize if it was not really professional or didn't seem well put together but again it's hard for me to think about people's scenarios and stuff when they don't really apply to me in the sense of i don't fully understand people having these types of requirements because it just doesn't make any sense to me because like i said resources on a computer is never a problem with me especially if i had a dual pc setup it was never a problem the only problem i had with software running on my pc is that if the software freezes crashes whatever and you don't notice it like i'm you know stream uh streaming over here or recording over here i'm not looking at my other stuff so i can't monitor the software you see what i'm saying so if that happens then yes, I could see why people have a problem, but the problem that they're list, they're I would say listing or wherever, it's like that's not really a problem. That's more of a preference. You know what I'm saying? That's a more of a personal preference. And it's when when you come down to personal preferences, you can't ask somebody else who doesn't have the same personal preferences to suggest something, because again, that's that's what you want. And that's not what I want. You, you see what I'm saying? So I have to take my own perspective out of it and try to think and come up with an answer for somebody who I just don't understand. You know what I'm saying? Their perspective. It's, it's not that I don't want to understand or I'm trying to be mean or something like that. It's just I personally don't understand it because I don't have a problem with what their personal preferences dictate. So that's why I would say just keep doing your research. You know what I'm saying? And that's what you should be doing when you're looking at products to buy anyways. So those are just my suggestions. They're not set in stone. Take what I say with a grain of salt. Don't attack me with pitchforks. <laughs> like, I don't know how else to convey it. But yeah, hopefully you guys understand that. Godly, I think this is about an hour long, but it is what it is. Nice little discussion videos. Hey, we're back with the discussion videos. People said they liked listening to my content. They like listening to me and stuff like that. If you do, let me know in the comments down below. Leave a like on the video. Um, do all that stuff. If you're new to the channel and you found it informative or helpful in any way, shape, or form, then feel free to share it with people by hitting the like button, commenting down below, potentially subscribing because that pushes the video into the algorithm. But you know me, I don't really care about that stuff. If somebody happens to find a video wherever and they find it helpful, that's what matters to me. With that being said, I want to say thank you guys so much. I don't think I've mentioned it before but we hit 1500 subscribers. That's absolutely insane to me. And we're getting close. YouTube just uh, not too long ago notified me. We're getting close to hitting the watch time for running ads on the videos. That's weird. <laughs> I never thought we would get to the point of channel members, but just getting to the point to be able to turn on ads. And I don't, I don't want to get to the point to where I'm like those content creators who like you click on a video and there's like two pre-roll ads. And then when you're watching a video, it's like 17 ads. <laughs> Absolutely insane. Me personally, I run YouTube premium because I find more um, fulfillment out of that because to me, it's my Netflix, it's my Hulu. It's like my watching movies online for free kind of thing or whatever because that's the only platform that i watch other than 
two streaming platforms, which is Twitch and Kick, and I barely watch Twitch. It's only like maybe I would say three people that I watch, but most people they multi stream anyways. So nine times out of ten, I watch them on YouTube. And thank God, Kick doesn't have ads yet. But rumor mill is is that they need ads to survive and run, and they're leaking money and all this stuff. I've seen a lot of people trying to support this idea of platforms and the ads. I'm not I'm not gonna get into that I, that realm of just topics or discussions because I'm not educated enough to weigh in on that. But yeah. I'm, I'm just hoping one day they just don't because it, it ads are just super annoying to me they're not helpful to me personally i have not seen an ad that i was actually interested in until they remade the first godzilla movie because growing up i was a fan of that and i happened to see it wherever on television and i was like oh that's cool other than that i get my news i, I look for products and stuff like that i know how to do it myself i don't need somebody holding my hand to be like, Hey, look at this product, look at this product. If I want to know about a product, I, I will find my, a way to know about the product or know about a category and new products within it. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure when we're going to do an ads. I probably will sit here and try to have a discussion video with you guys. And you can let me know in the comments about, you know, how many ads should I run? How many people are running, you know, YouTube premium and stuff like that. Because again, I don't want that shit to be annoying because it's, it's annoying to me. It was annoying enough to just finally be like, I'm getting YouTube premium because this shit is getting ridiculous. So again, I don't want people to run into that. But at the same time, if companies are not going to pay me for videos and stuff like that, and I'm doing product reviews, the little extra money that I could get from the AdSense and stuff like that, which is not going to be crazy, even for my level of stuff, it'll probably be like five bucks, but it will help me pay for doing product reviews. And I'm not looking for paying bills. I'm good on that. It's just, I'm trying to, you know, be able to bring you guys more videos. So that stuff helps out. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know, but let me know your thoughts on that in the comments down below as well. Uh, but yeah, this video has been super long, but I just wanted to take the time to kind of have a heart to heart. It's, um, it's crazy to me that I can upload a video and just have people watch it. You know what I'm saying? Like when I uploaded a video and it gets like 20 views, that's that's insane to me. You know what I'm saying? And then some of them do take off. But like when I did my apology video, like the next morning I woke up, several different comments, it was already over 100 views. And I was like, this video should have got like five. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just weird to me how sometimes the algorithm works or just people just support. It's just, it's, it's mind blowing. You know what I'm saying? It's just, <laughs> thank you guys so much. I'm not going to cry. Let's, let's go ahead and end the video. With that being said, y'all take care. Have a quick test day. God bless you and yours and deuces everybody. Sorry for the ramblings. I'm, I'm on the high end of my bipolar too right now. So yeah, <laughs> much love everybody. Deuces.